Okay, thank you everyone. I'm going to present my paper, Smartphone Location Spoofing Attack in Wireless Networks. This is my email address. If you have any questions, feel free to send me the email. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the R9. I will present my paper in six parts. Start from the introduction of localization technique and security. Okay, background. There are three major localization techniques, as we can see here. They are GPS, cellular tower, and Wi-Fi. And a smartphone mainly use GPS for the localization, but uh, currently, uh, smartphone also use Wi-Fi and cellular tower signal to get a more accurate uh, uh, localization signal. Recently. GPS free localization grows very fast. That's mainly because there are weak GPS signals in some cases and the uh, wireless spores growing very fast as we can see from the right figure. And the Wi-Fi localization can be very accurate. The structure of the Wi-Fi localization system is shown here. And at first, the smartphone will collect the Wi-Fi signals, and it will send these signals as a query to a central database. The central database therefore will return the positioning information, and after get this information, the smartphone will calculate the final positioning result and show that to the user. However, these localization systems have some security issues. Um, as we know, all those uh, signals are unencrypted, and those unencrypted signals are easy to simulate. And the attacker can actually block the legitimate signals, as we can see in this figure. And the attacker can further craft false location signals and send to the smartphone. Let the smartphone believe it is at uh, another location than, it, uh, than the ground truth. Because of the security issues, there are a lot of attack against the current uh, um, positioning systems. It's actually easy for the attack to launch a static attack, but for the dynamic attack, it's actually uh, not that easy and limited. As we can see from this figure, um, um, an attacker from Kershaw Zen, their attacker requires shape matching in the real world with uh, the same shape as the attacker route and to spoof the navigation system, which is not easy to achieve. So our motivations are shown here. We want to exploit the current vulnerabilities of Android wireless location system and design both static and dynamic attacks against it. And we want to prove that it is feasible to attack current smartphone location system and it's important to find a different solution. Okay, now we go to the Next part, we want to use reverse engineering to infer the Wi-Fi localization system. The reason why we want to use reverse engineering to infer the Wi-Fi localization system is because this system is actually a black box. We know that the, the device connect uh, the those uh, Wi-Fi signals and send to central database, but uh, what determines the uh, last location results, we actually don't know. And this, uh, we actually need this uh, mechanism behind it to make sure our attack is accurate enough. The goal for the reverse engineering model is that the attacker wants a reverse engineering model that can have similar behavior as the Wi-Fi localization system. And before sending out the attack signal, 
the attacker can use uh, this model to make sure his attack is effective and we lock, will not cause abnormal positional result. So there are four steps for reverse engineering model as we can see here. Data capture, pre-processing, positioning model, and algorithm evaluation. So we capture data use Wi-Fi manager and capture the information like a MAC address and the uh, RSSI and other informations and uh, uh, this features how we connect all the uh, Wi-Fi informations around a route and then we pre-process the longitude and the latitude to XY coordinators use the formula show here and normalize to the original point and uh, uh, the final record of input data is shown here and so the first positioning model we choose is weighted linear regression model as this figure shows ISSI have very big impact to the final location result so we use ISSI to weight the coordinators uh, uh, as input. So the model input is shown as here every uh, coordinators will multiply the RSSI value uh, and uh, mm, so we get the input data matrix and uh, the final weighted linear regression model is shown here we can have n betas multiply this um, this input matrix and uh, add the three bias and get the final output the next model we want to use is a neural network model as we can see here we can flat the uh, input at x1, y1, r1, and until rn, and those will multiply the, by the uh, weight matrix, and finally get to the output layer to generate the output x, y, z. And uh, here is the details for the neural network model. Uh, as we can see, the weight matrix is here, multiply the x1, y1, and till rn, the input, and the, uh, plus the, the bias. Here is the first layer. We can add more layers that we can see from the second formula. And uh, after we choose the model, we train the model and get the final results. And the uh, algorithm evaluation shows uh, the accuracy of these models range from 4.7 to 52.5. And uh, the best model is neural network model, which has two hidden layers, 600 units with 50% uh, dropped out. And uh, uh, the accuracy is uh, 4.7 meters. Now we go to the third part, external signal attack against current Wi-Fi localization. So the first is uh, uh, the goal of the attacker. It depends on which, what kind of app um, the user is using. Like for driving direction, the attacker may want to divert the victim. And for peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing, and the attacker might want to overcharge the victim. And for a location-based game, the attacker may want to cheat the games. Okay, so the attacker before the attack, the attacker also need to connect some data. Mm, the static data, uh, data is connected uh, from the vehicle, and uh, uh, 
dynamic data is similar as we collect the data in reverse engineering module. So the attacker needs to find a portable device, although a common laptop can send those Wi-Fi packets, but it's not easy to hide them. So we choose a device called ESP8266, which is very small and uh, can uh, send all the attack signals we want. Because ESP8266 has a limited uh, capability to send out APs, so we may need more than one ESP8266. Therefore, we design a time synchronization algorithm to synchronize all those devices. And the attack signal is actually a beacon frame packet. Uh, the packet uh, uh, structure is shown here is actually a 51 byte concise packet without any optional parameters and even the SSID we only use a non byte and uh, to minimize the uh, size of packet also to hidden to hide the SSID so the attacker also need to block the GPS signal. So uh, the attacker use a USRP based jammer that can like uh, jam the L1 GPS signal at the center of frequency. See here. And here is the attack algorithm. The the first uh, the attacker will use a uh, reverse engineering to verify those uh, attack signal. If it's verified, then uh, the attacker will uh, send out these uh, attack signals. After the attack, we, we may see the attack result and the evaluation. So we choose two different evaluation metrics as we can see from this figure. The red one is the choose design the distance and the yellow one is design the result distance. In static attack, we can successfully uh, change the smartphone location result to different cities in different apps as we can see in this figure. Now we check the performance of static attack. We can see that the designed result distance shown in the left figure uh, has a range from 2 meters to 13 meters, which is actually in the range of normal positioning error, which is shown in the right figure. So here is the setup for dynamic attack. As we can see, we put the jammer and the ESP8266 buffer in the car, and the victim phone will receive those uh, the signals from the spoofer. So we choose a route that drive about five minutes, and uh, and the route is shown here. During the attack. We can observe an increased uh, ISSI as the right figure shows compared to the left figure, uh, which is normal driving. We first check the control normal driving positioning error. As we can see here, it shows a positioning error of 0 to 15.23 meters in 95% confidence interval. And the CDF shows the majority of the error is below 15 meters. Now we want to check the evaluation matrix during the attack. First, we check the designed result distance. As this figure shows, we observe a designed result distance in 3.35 plus minus 1.16 meters. And for the Wi-Fi positioning error during the attack, 
the standard error is 9.26 plus minus 8.53, which is not the significant difference with the normal control driving data we presented before. The p value is 0.28. Similar as the normal positioning error, the positioning error during the attack also ha have majority of the error below 15 meters, but with more outliers as we can see from this figure. And we actually observed a log regression of a position error compared to the number of Wi-Fi. That means like a more Wi-Fi AP is caused like a less position error and we, we can see a regression shown here. So the result can be summarized here. During the attack design the result distance and the position result stand error do not have significant difference with normal data. And we found that the use, use more uh, uh, attack signals can make the uh, stand error even smaller. So let's go to the fifth part, defense based on Doppler frequency shift. So the defense motivation is that we assume that the attack device will have different Doppler shift of the with the legitimate device, that's because the attacker hides the device on the car and the legitimate device is on the ground. So uh, we can calculate the Doppler shift using the formula shown here. There are some challenges for this method. The biggest challenge is, uh, is how to get the accurate frequency reading of Wi Fi packet and what kind of equipment we should use in the experiment and how to confirm the data is the, the actual read of a frequency. Okay, now we go to the sixth part discussion and the conclusion. So in this paper, we show an attack against the, the calendar localization system through our designed external spoofing attack so we also show it's important to explore the current uh, localization system and find out an effective defense solution for this type of attack. And third, we found that many new techniques begin to apply to Wi-Fi localization system. Our future work uh, should uh, focus on this direction. And the fourth, uh, the Doppler shift defense method is powerful, and uh, but it is actually not easy to implement on smartphone uh, because of the hardware issue. Okay, that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to send an email to me. Thank you.